Good afternoon, man. 25 gamers. In today's episode of Offensive Scheme of the Week, we're introducing you to our basic um, formation here out of the Atlanta Offensive Playbook. We're using the Oakland Raiders this week for the Scheme of the Week. And the play we want to focus on is the Z spot, but we like to flip the play. Real quick, your quick audibles from this formation, you have the halfback mid-draw, which you can use in situations where they're not sending heavy pressure. Um, you then have the um, the verticals play, which we like to use this play as a shot play. We like to put more on a smart routed out route. And we like to put Darren McFadden on an option route. Our first read on this play is Denarius Moore. Uh, if there's a purple zone, you don't want to throw it, as you see there. Cover four coverage, you're not going to want to do that. However, if you see man coverage, what you're going to get here, if they're running a basic two-man under, is you're going to get a press animation on a Moore. Once you see that press, you're going to quickly look back to your left side um, to Osbury on a man-beating wheel route. So here, press, look back to Osbury, you see he's wide open. Now, some people will use or control that route. If they do, obviously, you're not going to throw it. But that's just another read. All right, now real quick, let's take a glance here at what could maybe happen if they're in an off-coverage man play. Something like um, a man blitz or something. Well, in this situation, more will no longer be pressed, and we can easily deliver that smart routed out route. All right, another situation here, uh, potentially we calling a cover three coverage. If that happens um, on this verticals play, we like to hit Denarius Moore as well here. Um, because that, even though that, uh, even though that guy looks like he'll cover it, he actually will not because he's in a flat zone. Now, real quick, um, some people like to call cover three, and they'll put their um, flat zones in purple zones. Well, if they do that against this play, we're going to notice it because the out route will no longer be open. So then, what we'll do is we'll look on the left side of the field and try to hit one of those verticals patterns. So here we see it's not open, but what it is open that deep post to Jacoby Ford over the top. Lastly, guys, against the cover two sink, the out route will actually not be open against the cover two sink most times. Um, so what we like to do in that situation is we like to check down to um, that deep vertical pattern on the left side of the field. You see it's going to crush that cover two sink. So that is our reads uh, out of the verticals. Spacing, I don't really ever call it, so I'm not going to go over that. Um, now on the play action post, this is one of the better plays in Madden 25. What we like to do here is we like to put McFadden on a wheel route. Okay, that's all we. That's the only adjustments we make. Our first read on this is going to be the flat pass to Osbury. And against cover four coverage, it's going to do a good job of getting open. Now, there are certain coverages that will not do a good job getting open. One of those that come to mind is a cover three. In a situation where your opponent calls a cover three and you're running play action post, what you want to do is you want to hit Streeter on that little uh, jump cut pattern that he is on. So you see here, cover three, so I immediately check down to Streeter, and he's going to be wide open. Situations where this may not work is in the situation where they may be calling a cover two. Well, if that happens, then we have other reads to beat cover two. The beauty of this play is the reads are, there's a lot of reads within only a couple routes. If they are in a cover two coverage, we want to hit Streeter coming across the middle of the field underneath, as you see there. Now, if they're in man coverage, um, that is one other example where potentially the flat route may, may not be open at the snap of the ball. So what we like to do there is we like to quickly look over to our wheel route and get the ball in the hands of Darren McFadden and maybe break a tackle. Now, there are situations where you need better gains against a man coverage. If that situation happens to be, then you're going to be able to hit Jacoby Ford on a deep post route. Pass lead that thing to the inside. It's been killing man all year. A lot of the better players enjoy this PA post play. So that's going to cover the quick audibles. Um, now I want to cover the Z spot. What we like to do with this is we like to put Osbury on a zig pattern. And we like to put Streeter on a drag. And that's the only things that we like to do to adjustments to this play. Now we're going to motion Streeter to the left before we snap it three steps. And then we're going to snap the ball. He's going to be our first read. And really, he's going to be able to beat almost any coverage in the game. But starting off, that's our first read against man coverage. As you see Streeter here. Uh, just pass lead that thing to the inside. Uh, you may want to do four steps. Um, if you're just depending on like the formation and that the defense is in and stuff, it could depend on your motion snap depth. I find three to four steps is the most effective. So here one more time, we're going to motion him out. You see he's going to get that snap back animation against man coverage, and we'll be able to hit him there. That's our first read. Now against cover four coverage, that's going to still be open. And I like this because it's an easy first read. That's immediately going to, if they're going to cover four or cover two man under, we're immediately going to be able to squash it. 
Now, a situation where they may be cover three, well, their drag will still be open. Um, but, we really enjoy hitting this corner route to Ford. As you see, pass through that to the outside. Unfortunately, there, the cornerback made a phenomenal play on the ball. Uh, one thing that you could do if, if that happens a lot to you is you could simply pass lead it down into the outside, but you see there the guy will cover it. He'll stay with it. So that's why it's important to sometimes wait a little bit on the corner route. So like I'll smart route it so that it goes a little deeper on first down situations. And when that happens, you'll have a two-man read, and a lot of times that corner route will still be wide open because the zig route's going to hold the flat down. The reason it wasn't holding the flat down before that was because it wasn't getting out there in time for the corner route to break. Now, there are situations where they'll call, you know, cover three, like I said earlier, and they'll put their guys in cor in uh, purple zones. And if that happens, this is going to, it will also, the drag will still be open, but also the zig pattern to the tight end will be open underneath, and you can take a quick five, ten yards there. The last situation I want to cover is against a cover two sink. This is a situation where, where a lot of our routes will be covered. So what we're going to do here is we're going to check down to that deep, deep post pattern. And that was a little that was a little bit late uh, from my standpoint. But we're going to check down to this deep, deep post pattern to uh, Daenerys more over the top. And basically, when that middle linebacker sucks down right there, you're going to hit it right in behind him. And it's kind of a touchy throw. So if you don't like that, if you don't want to, if you don't want to throw that against cover two, completely understand. That's why we have this block and release pattern um, to Darren McFadden here. So against cover two sink, he's just going to drop off, and he's one of the better backs in the game, so he can maybe break a tackle or whatever. Also, real quickly, guys, if they're in a cover two sink, um, you may not have noticed because I was trying to show you that deeper route. But what will happen if they use the middle linebacker is if they go deep with the post route then you're automatically going to have that underneath route, as you see there. If they don't go deep with the post route, so say they say they try to jump down on this, and in order to show this, I'm just going to man him up with Woodyard. Okay, so say they're just trying to stay on that motion snap drag that's been killing them all game. Well, then in that situation, you're then going to have this very deep post route wide open over the middle, as you see there, for a huge gain. So that's how we like to use our shotgun bunch as our base formation, guys. Be sure to check out the rest of the scheme of the week this week. Hopefully you guys will enjoy this Atlanta playbook. Some of the most elite tournament players are running this playbook. Uh, real quick, a shout-out to T. Davis over at the Gamers Lab. Um, I know that he is going to be releasing an offensive ebook, I think, on this playbook. So if you want to see some more advanced uh, tips and tactics from him over at the Atlanta playbook, with the Atlanta playbook, go over to the thegamerslab.com and check him out. Uh, he's one of the better players in the game, one of my favorite uh, tournament players to uh, learn from. So be sure to check him out. I'm not quite sure how much it is, but I know that it will probably be worth your money. So thank you so much for watching my uh, Scheme of the Week video. And be sure to stay tuned for the rest of the week where we break down some really effective formations out of this Atlanta uh, Falcons offensive playbook.